It's crazy that it's already been a month since I first held this phone at the launch event in London. So now that I've used it for a considerable amount of time, what is my verdict? Can OnePlus continue its legacy? Hey, I'm Brienne and this is the OnePlus 6 one month later review. Let's start on the outside. OnePlus have really stepped up their game with the design. The phone is a glass sandwich with aluminium sides and I can't stress this enough, it's one of the most beautiful phones out there. I especially like the mirror black version as it just looks more premium with its ceramic-like finish. It does attract a lot of fingerprints though, so if that bothers you, you might be better off with the matte black or white version of the phone. I still find it interesting how they managed to make those look and feel more like metal even though they're also made with glass. So I've already gotten the question why they didn't just go with metal in the first place then to make the phone more durable. It's not as big of a deal as you might think though. I've dropped this phone on tiled floor multiple times already and it still doesn't have a single scratch. The cost for these drops is worth mentioning though. I've never had a phone that is this slippery, especially if you put it on a smooth surface face down, it's basically guaranteed to fall off. I don't like putting this beauty in a case, but you probably should. Fortunately OnePlus does include a silicone case in the box and if you buy this phone through the link in the video description, you get another free first party case from OnePlus or some other accessories for free. Let's talk about the buttons since it's worth mentioning that they feel exceptionally good and clicky. There's also the alert slider which I do like, but I wish that it could be remapped. In my opinion the middle position should really be priority instead of vibrate, as I do see myself using that more often. Around the frame of the phone, you'll also find the dual SIM tray, still great to have, the USB Type-C port, and the speaker. This one is also exceptional, but not in a good way. It sounds super tinny and is completely silenced when you put a finger over it. It would even be bad if we didn't have phones with stereo speakers to compare to. The thing that kind of offsets this negative in the audio department is that you still get a headphone jack though. I don't know if this is the cause for the missing IP certification. It is water resistant though, so it will probably survive a drop in the toilet, just don't go swimming with it. Okay, let's get to that display. It's a 6.3 inch AMOLED panel, almost an inch more than the OnePlus 5 without making the phone bigger, with a resolution of 2280 by 1080, but you really don't notice that it's a 1080p screen. It's plenty sharp and has great colors. They do wash out a bit in bright sunlight, but for all intents and purposes, it's a beautiful display. I guess we can't talk about it though without talking about the notch. I'm completely impartial to it, it would of course be preferable to have no bezel at the top, but this is still better than a complete forehead since it gives you much more real estate. And if you really hate it, you can also hide it in the software. At that point you don't notice it since it's an OLED panel and you still gain the space that would normally be taken up by the notification bar. The 6 only has an ambient display and not an always on display despite the OLED screen though which I guess brings us into software. You can disable the soft keys on the bottom and switch them out for gestures. I do find however that these are not as smooth as I would like them to be and they also don't replicate all functionality. Especially the assistant and split screen are missing, that's why I stick with the keys. You also have the familiar screen off gestures, the dark mode and customization for things like the status bar. Though I still don't understand why it always shows the alarm as three dots even when there is enough space and why I can't have the battery percentage inside the symbol. OnePlus has always been pretty good at making some good additions in Oxygen OS, but keeping the overall stock Android feel. This is why updates are fast, it of course runs Android 8.1 Oreo and can even be upgraded to the P beta, and why performance is too. Unlocking is instant with the fingerprint sensor or face unlock, which works at night but not with sunglasses. Save for the Pixel, you'll not find a phone that is this snappy, it's just a pleasure to use. This is also largely due to the latest specs as you can expect from OnePlus. The Snapdragon 845 coupled with 6 or 8GB of RAM is as good as you can get, and so is the 64 to 256GB of UFS2 storage. What is not as good as you can get though are the cameras. Yes, there are multiple again. A 16 megapixel main camera with OIS and a 20 megapixel secondary shooter that is only here for bokeh. The 2x zoom is purely software. Both cameras have an f1.7 aperture and the phone can take some good pictures. Let me put it like this, it's better than the last generation of flagships, but not as good as this generation. 
The pictures are pleasing. It's hard to get a photo that isn't good, even in low light thanks to OIS. But it's also hard to get an exceptional one. The camera app is really snappy, pun intended, also when switching to HDR automatically. And I still like the pro mode with raw capabilities. Portrait mode is still basically a gimmick, but it works well. Video recording is strong, up to 4K at 60fps is possible, and the combination of EIS and OIS do a good job at stabilization. 60fps makes the image darker due to the higher shutter speed, by the way, something to bear in mind. You also get 480fps slow motion at 720p, which is much more useful since you can record for up to a minute and not just 0.2 seconds. But the quality leaves to be desired. Finishing up with the front camera, it's still 16 megapixels, produces some above average selfies, and also supports portrait mode. Unfortunately, you can take pictures for a long time before the phone dies. Despite the same 3300 mAh battery as in the previous generations, battery life is a real strong point, probably due to the lower power consumption of the Snapdragon 845. More than 7 hours of screen on time are no problem. This is with brightness at around 50% and a normal mix of video watching, messaging and browsing. So even if you're a heavy user, you will get through a day without a problem even when staying up late, and for everyone else, this is getting into two-day territory. Now of course you want me to say how awesome charging is with dash charge as well, but I still think it's a double-edged sword. On one hand, charging is really super fast. 25% in about 10 minutes and 65% in half an hour is amazing. It really changes your charging habits to only top up when you need to. But this only works with the provided charger. Everything else will charge the phone very slowly. Other phones with Qualcomm Quick Charge don't charge quite as fast, but at least there are tons of adapters and power banks that support it. So since there's also no wireless charging despite the glass back, I would call it fast, but inflexible. Conclusion time. This phone isn't perfect, and at a little over 500 bucks, I also wouldn't expect it to be. But it gets all of the basics so right that you forget about the missing bells and whistles. The camera isn't perfect, but if you hand this phone to someone who hasn't heard of OnePlus, the combination of design and performance will not make them think that this phone costs as little as it does. And I think that's all you need to hear to know that it's a great value. It will definitely remain in my pocket. And in case all of the things I just said made you want to pick one up, again, do it through the link in the video description to get some freebies. If you enjoyed this video, then you know which buttons to press, and don't forget to press that follow button on Twitter. I'm Brian, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.